Good morning and welcome to Bible Before Dawn. We are continuing our Bible reading from Matthew chapter 13, verse 13 to 17 today. And I will be reading from the NIV version, so please get your Bibles and let's get started. Thank you, Father God in heaven. We bless your holy name. Dear God, we thank you for another day to study your word. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you give us listening ears, ears that can understand that which you have given us, so that Father will be able to apply it in our lives to bring glory to your name. We thank you, dear God, that you have heard our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 13 verse 13 to 17. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, Many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Amen. So Isaiah the prophet had prophesied about these people that because of the hardness of their hearts, they will be ever hearing and not understand. They will see, but they cannot perceive. This means that as long as you harden your heart, as long as you choose to disobey God's principles, you will not have understanding. You will see things, you can read, you can hear things, you can read and write, but you would still not have wisdom. You will still not be able to comprehend what the word is trying to say. So you will keep on reading your Bible. You will know that verses, chapters, you can quote. But when it comes to application, you'll be lost. You will not be able to do it. So in verse 16, Jesus is saying, But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Now he's talking to us, his followers. If you're a follower of Christ, this is what Jesus is saying, that you, you have the ability to understand you have the ability to perceive so there's good news jesus is saying that as long as you are following him he was talking to his disciples they were his followers so if you follow christ he's saying you have ears that can hear you have eyes that can perceive he's giving that to you so you should not lack understanding in anything you should really not struggle in this life because you see whatever you have understanding of becomes very easy the only reason why we struggle to do things is because of lack of understanding that's why the bible says in all your seeking seek understanding because without understanding information is useless what a lot of people are doing today is seeking for information and so, yes, they have a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of information, but there's no understanding. And so they have abundance of information that they cannot process to become anything useful. Jesus is telling us, as long as we follow him, we will have understanding. He will give us the ears that can understand. He will give us the eyes that can perceive. So that when you see something going on, you are not going to see it the same way everybody else sees it. When something is happening in your home, at work, you know, in the world, 
whatever news is going on, whatever you see, you will have the kind of eyes that can perceive. You'll be able to see through the cracks. You'll be able to see through lies. You'll be able to see through deception. You'll be able to see things that the ordinary eyes cannot see. And that is a benefit unto you. Because whilst everybody is running helter-skelter, going crazy, you will remain calm. You will be at peace because you know what's up. The, the choices you're going to be making will be completely different from the one that lacks the proper perception because you're receiving directly from the Father. And God doesn't lie. Whatever God says is the truth. And that's exactly what will happen. So if something is going on and God tells you what's going to happen, you are safer. You, are, you have peace. There's security in having understanding so when the whole world is you know screaming and going crazy you 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 function differently you are calm because you understand what's going on and so jesus was saying that those that are following him they've been given understanding so he doesn't need to speak to them in parables he speaks directly to them so for you, whatever is going on, the secrets, the things that is hidden from the ordinary person, you, it will be revealed unto you. At all times, in every situation, in every circumstance, all you have to do is pay attention to the Holy Spirit because he is the one sent to reveal all things to us. The Bible says he will lead us into all truth. He will teach us everything, right? So he's the one Sent. So you need to pay attention to him. As long as you're paying attention to the Holy Spirit, he will order your steps right. If you're not listening to him, that's where you will have a problem. That's why I'm saying if you're following Christ, it's a matter of submission. You don't follow Christ with your mouth. You don't follow Christ when you are debating. That's when you say, oh, I'm a child of God and Jesus is my Lord and you're quoting scriptures. That's not what following Christ means. Following Christ is dead to self. You cannot be following Christ and still pleasing yourself. You cannot be selfish. You cannot be prideful. You cannot be all about yourself, self-absorbed. You can't be like that. You have to be totally submissive. Wherever he says go is where you go. What he tells you to do is what you do. So as children of God, we have already received the Holy Spirit, who is our counselor, our teacher, our everything. So we need to have a relationship with him so that he, we can hear from him. We need to know when he's talking to us, when he's prompting us. That's how he helps us. Sometimes you, you're, you're about to do something that you're going to regret after. He's the one that will prompt you to let you know, don't do this. Don't say this at this time. Keep quiet you know look up look down he's the one that will direct you that's why i always say you must have a listening ear develop your relationship with the holy spirit you must get connected it's a relationship you need to build on it you have to put in effort the bible says if we draw near to god he will draw near to us you have to prioritize him so jesus is saying those of us that are following him we have listening ears. We have eyes that can see. Another thing I wanted to mention is that if you have a person in your life that has a hardened heart, that believes in God but struggles in their walk with the Lord because their hearts are, you know, hardened, we must be careful not to push them away to the side to think that you know, because their hearts are hardened or because they are not following the Lord, that we just throw them away. We have to be very careful. We must intercede for them. Okay, Jesus loves them. Do you see how he spent so much time with them? He will sit there and give his time for them. Even though he knows they can't really hear him, they won't listen. He still cared for them. You must still care for them. 
you must still treat them the way you would treat them if they were okay if their minds were normal the way you would treat them you must make it a point to treat them that same way don't push them away don't look down on them instead intercede for them ask for mercy for them that god will work on them to help them you know kill that pride so they can be humbled and now be able to follow christ because christ came to die for the sinner he did not come to die for the righteous but the sinner christ cares about all those souls so we can't you know write them off it might be difficult if you are dealing with such a person especially if it's a spouse i'm speaking to those of you who are married to unbelievers it is a very challenging and very difficult things and sometimes you might think your only option is divorce but the bible tells us that we should continuously live out our righteousness in their faces they should see it because look human beings are like mirrors we mirror each other so when you stand firm you strengthen yourself by the word of god and you are able to consistently live out the word eventually as they are watching you some way somehow you your behavior your character will rub off on them and eventually some of them might be saved there is a might there's a chance that they will yield their will yes they may never because it's a matter of a will they may never care but you should still attempt just maybe your case might not be the case where they never yielded and they died your case may be the one that actually became influenced by you and turned their lives around so never dismiss a person like that if you're married to one don't be quick to leave them it's not easy what i'm asking you to do is not easy by no means but with the help of the holy spirit it will be easy the holy spirit will counsel you he will give you wisdom that is beyond your imagination he will give you peace he will give you the joy you need to carry through and keep on modeling the christ-like life in front of them be more forgiving more compassionate more tolerant more understanding treat them the way you would treat them if they were okay keep on modeling it with the help of the holy spirit when you feel weak when you feel tired because it's a lot of work and sometimes you would want to snap but when you feel like you're about to snap when you feel like you know what you are frustrated go to the place of prayer tell god to pour into you because you want to serve him it's god you're doing this for not yourself do you understand so go to god they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength that means as children of god we do get drained when you're giving love all the time especially the unconditional type when you're loving the unlovable the wicked it's so draining so you need to go back you need to be spending a lot of time with the lord so he can strengthen you okay so don't write them off don't quit just keep on going and trust god to work it out and if unfortunately you could not um hold yourself and you have divorced them by this time and you are now listening to this message and you feel like it's too late you're already divorced it's still not too late you could still pray for them yes they are no longer living with you but most of you that are divorced with children you know that it's still the same thing it's as if you still live together it's still the same thing nothing has really changed because you share children together so you are still having to deal with them it's still not any easier being divorced doesn't make it any easier that's one thing the Lord taught me a while ago. Being divorced or separated from the partner that is not submitted to him does not make it easier. It doesn't. So I would encourage you, pray for that partner. Because you have children with them. 
your children are a part of them and i'm pretty sure your children will not want to see their mom or their dad in hell they would want two of you together it doesn't matter what it is the person has done and you too being a child of god with the heart of christ i'm pretty sure you don't want to see your partner in hell no matter how terrible they are so intercede for them pray that they will have an encounter an unforgettable encounter with the lord and in your distance relationship with them however you are relating to them model the the character of christ let them see you be more merciful towards them be more forgiving be more kind don't don't you know act out of frustration all the time with them and like i said when you feel frustrated go to god and get poured into so you can come back to be able to love them remember the love we are called to have for people is not the one that you and i would prefer it's the unconditional one the one that has no condition to it the one that you give to both the wicked and the good that's the love we are called by Christ to have for one another, to have for people. Okay, so you would need God himself to help you to be able to love like that. So don't give up. Keep on loving them unconditionally. Keep on showing them Christ. Let them see the Christ in you all the time and keep on praying for them ask for mercy all the time every time they offend you go in a place of prayer it's not going to be easy but you can do it you can do all things through christ so go and pray for them ask god to bless them ask god to help them ask god to to have mercy on them to not allow the consequences of their sins to come upon them pray that prayer for them and who knows by maybe your fervent prayer, God will hear you and turn things around. On that note, I will end today's message here. I really hope that you were blessed by today's message. And I want to use this opportunity to thank all my subscribers. God bless you all. And I'm praying that but as these seeds are being sown in you, that the Lord God himself will water it so that you can bear fruit. And until I come your way next time, remember, it's Bible before dawn.